All right, so we are now in week number two. And week number two is all about control flow statements. So there are many things that you need to understand on this topic, uh, particularly uh, all about how program flows in Python. No? And in Python, oops, I forgot to open my camera. Just a minute. All right. So to begin with uh, our uh, lecture this morning, as I am saying, we'll be talking about control flow statements no? and the intended learning outcomes for this morning. As you can see from the module number two, um, this module is intended to familiarize you with control structures, which are iterative and control statements. And at the end of this module, you should be able to do the following. Number one, you should be able to demonstrate the use of control flow structures in Python. And most importantly, create programs using different uh, control flow statements. All right, so let's move on and uh, let's discuss about what, what is a control flow statement. Now, when you try to code, and you write a program, especially when you are learning C++ in your programming logic and design. Uh, what you have learned so far is what we call a sequential type of programming. Okay. However, during the middle part of your programming course, you begin to understand about uh other types of statements that you can write in your programming and it allows you to manipulate your program it allows you to do many things unlike if you are only learning about sequential and by the way sequential is the default mode for our programming and program the program control flow this is what we call the order in which the program code executes. So it's, it's not the way you write it. It's the way the program executes the code that you write. Okay? And the control flow of Python program is usually manipulated. They are managed and regulated by conditional statements, uh, loops, and sometimes function calls, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and Python has three types of control structures, no? namely the following. The first one is the default mode, which is the sequential. And the second one is selection, which is used for decisions and branching. And we're going to give some examples of that later. And the last is what we call the repetition. And this is used for creating loops, looping statements, or if you want to repeat a piece of code multiple times, just like whenever you want to call a function, something like that, or subroutine, you may want to call it from time to time to be able to reuse the code that you want. Okay, let's try to, to uh, discuss one by one these three types of control structures. No? Uh, the first thing that we will understand is sequential. And I do hope that sequential is not new to everyone. No? Sequential are set of statements whose execution process happens in a sequence. No? From the word sequence, the compiler, no? I mean, what I mean compiler, I'm talking about the Python compiler. No? Uh, it executes the program by line, okay? For example, the first line will be executed, the second line will be next, and the third, and, and, and so it goes. No? But there are plenty of problems in sequential statements. No? Um, because sometimes you would want to create some logical approach on your programming. And sometimes a sequence cannot do that. No? 
what if you want to repeat a statement that you already executed? Shall you write it again and again? So your program will be full of repetitions, no? full of redundancies. Okay, and that is not a good programming approach. And that is one of the problem of sequential statements. No? Um, if the logic has broken, one, one thing, if the logic has broken, for example, in any one of the lines, then the complete source code execution will break. No? Meaning, if there's something happened along the way no, while, while the program is being executed, then the program will stop. And what about the rest of the codes that has not been or have not been executed by the compiler? So that is the meaning of the code execution break. No? Uh, for, for example, you write 100 lines, but after 75 lines, the program breaks. So what happens to the next 25 lines? It will not be executed because the program halted. The program stopped. So that's the meaning of some problems that we encounter in a sequential statement. And this is an example, as you can see, we have line one here, declaring a variable A to 20, line two, declaring a variable B to 10, and line three, declaring a variable and subtracting the value of B to the value of A, or from the value of A. And then line four states that we want to print something like a subtraction is uh, equal to this and it will output the answer of C as a statement. So this is a particular uh, sequential statement that the compiler will try to execute line per line. And there's no problem with this sequential statement because it's going to execute from line to four. And there are, I think there's no problem with this. No? It's going to execute. Uh, the logic is simple. It will just have to, uh, to execute line by line until it is finished. And the program will stop once all of the lines are executed. However, we have what we call the selection or decision control statements. No? And in Python, the selection statements are known as decision control statements. Why is it called decision? Because we want the program to create decisions. Just like people, no? every day we are facing decisions. No? Either the decision is answerable by yes or no. Should you do it? Yes or no. Okay. Should you eat? Yes or no. Should you take a bath? Yes or no. Should you sleep? Yes or no. Should you play games? Yes or no. Should you watch movies? Yes or no. Every day we are facing decisions in life. No? And this is the same as in programming because programming is just a representation of real world scenarios that we would want to accomplish no? and we would want to create. And in the engineering world, it's the same. No? We are trying to solve some problems and those problems are facing decision-making uh, scenarios. Okay? Now, how do we create decision control statements? How do we execute instruction based on the conditions? And that is what we do in, in creating decision control statements. No? We create those decisions based on the conditions, whether the condition is true and it's going to execute something, but if the condition is false, it's not going to execute something or it's going to execute something else. All right? And as you can see from here, some decision control statements are are very simple, like the if statement. No, you already learned naman about the if statement before, right? From the programming logic and design. And the simple if statement is very simple. No, uh, we'll we'll give some example of this later. And 
another type of if statement is the if else statement meaning uh, if statement kasi is very simple it will just execute the statement following the condition if the condition is true but if statement or the simple if statement is not enough no because we would want to execute something if the condition is false and that follows the if else statement the if else statement is very complete because it's going to execute whether it is true or not if the condition is true execute the next statement but if the condition is false it's going to execute the else statement whatever it is that is included in the else block okay and we also have a nested if right the nested if is a state or our statements that are executed whenever um, the statements are true and it's continues to it continues to execute until the condition becomes false okay on the other hand the final statement here that you can see this is what we call the if else if else statement no so we have plenty of statements that the compiler will continue to execute if the condition is true and if it, it becomes false the next statement the next conditional if statement will be executed or will be tested all right so let's try to give some examples here um but before that uh, let's try to understand first after the selection or the decision statements we also have what we call repetition statements no? And repetition statements are um, are statements that allows us to 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 repeat you no know, everything that we would want to repeat. For example, uh, we are creating some looping statements that allows us to start from the very beginning, like for loop. On the other hand, we also have while loop that allows us to execute statements depending on the counter now we'll have some example of that later okay uh, for example here we have the if statement i mentioned a while ago about the if statement this this if statement is a conditional statement and we already know that uh, sometimes we need to execute a code whenever the condition is satisfied all right like in this case the if else if statement is used for decision making and basically ito yung mga common na if statement that we will see in our python programming okay and the syntax is very simple okay we use the keyword if followed by the test expression the test expression is like a comparison operators no? it, it will contain comparison operators like for example it compares something a variable to another variable and if that condition is true the following statement will be executed no? so that's the way we we interact with this uh if statement here all right so this is a flowchart of the if statement and as you can see there is a test expression here the test expression is answerable by true or false or it could be yes or no and as you can see if it is true the body of the if statement will be executed and it will continue for other operations following it however if the test expression becomes false it will not execute the body of the if statement it will just continue to execute the statements or the succeeding statements that will follow the condition all right as an example we have an example here uh, we would want to test if the number is positive we print an appropriate message so here we declare a number. Okay, let's try to create some. Uh, uh, I think we can hide some. Uh, 
Oh no, I cannot. Uh, I cannot add a line number here. How do I add line number here? Anyway, uh, as you can see from here, the, the, the first line here is just a declaration of a variable. We have a num and it contains the integer three. Now the condition of the if statement is this. It's very simple. If the number is greater than zero, and it is right, actually in our logic, we actually understood that the condition is already true because three is a positive number. We already know that. But how do we put it on a code? Now we need to test if the number is greater than zero. And since it's a variable, we can always change it. And whenever we change it, this statement will test whether it is a positive number. Okay. And if it is a positive number, if it is greater than zero, it's going to print the number three or wherever it is the number here is a positive number. Okay. But if it's not a positive number, if it is less than uh, less than uh, zero, for example, or if it is a zero, then this statement here will always be printed. Okay. Remember that every other statement, okay, same as this one. Okay, if it is false, then it's going to print this. This is always printed kasi. Alright? So as you can see, the output is simple. The output says that 3 is a positive number. And this one here, below it, it will print. This is always printed. So regardless of the output, so whether the condition is true or false, this will always be printed. As an example, as you can see from here, the number is now negative. So it's less than zero, right? So the condition here becomes false. So this statement will not be executed because according to our flowchart, this body of statement will not be executed if it is false, but it will execute the next statement following the condition. And this is the statement following the conditional statement, right? So therefore, this one is always executed. And as you can see here, this is the command that will always be executed no matter what the condition is, whether it is true or false. On the other hand, the second type of if statement is what we call the if else statement and this is i think the best uh conditional statement for if statement no because this one is somehow parang kulang siya no? kulang siya it's because what if the condition is false what will happen so there is no way to tell us if this condition is false or true but the if else statement uh solved that uh, dilemma or problem no? Because in the syntax, you can see that if the condition is true, this body of if statement will be executed. Otherwise, if the condition is false and that corresponds to the else statement, the body of this statement, of the else statement, will be executed. As you can see from the flowchart, it's very clear here. Okay, from the flowchart. There is the test expression. If it is true, this body will be executed. And if it is false, the body of the else will be executed. And then after the execution, the following statements, no, whatever it is, kung meron mang susunod na mga statements dito, they will be executed. Right? So as an example, we're checking again if the number is positive or negative and it will display the appropriate message uh, as you can see from here we declared num as equal to three if the number is greater than or equal to zero then it will print oh that's a positive or zero okay else we will print negative number. So this statement will be executed 
if the statement is true, if the statement is false, it's the else statement, it will print negative number. So you can see if you try to execute, three is a positive or a zero number. If we try to put zero here and execute it, then zero will say it's a positive or zero. But if we put a negative number here, like negative five, you can see that the output is a negative number because it doesn't satisfy the first condition. Okay, it satisfies the else condition. Right, so it's very simple, right? Okay, so what about the if else if else statement? So this is a condition that allows us to test. Uh, it's because the else if is actually the elif here is the short for else if. Okay, and it allows us to check for multiple expressions. As you can see from here, we have an expression here, but hindi pa tayo masaya. Naglagay pa tayo ng additional expression here. And it's going, it, it, this will test no? if the condition of the if statement is false, it will check the next statement for, uh, for, for the truthfulness. No? Kasi nung tinest niya to, if the statement is true, this will be executed, di ba? But if the statement is false, this next statement here, this next conditional statement or the else if statement will be tested. And if this will become false again, the else will be executed. In, in checking the, the uh, flowchart, this is the first condition, which is the, F, the if statement, right? Kung true yung statement ng if, this body of if will be executed. But if it is false, the next conditional statement or the else if will be executed or will be tested, sorry. And then again, since we need an answer of true or false, if it is true, the body of elif or else if will be executed. But if it is false, the body of the else will be executed. Right? As simple as that, no? very simple. Nothing to, 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 to think about, but basically it's just the way it is. No? So remember that it's very simple in an, in an if, else, if, else statement. No? Uh, this one will be tested first. If it is false, uh, if it is false, then the next conditional statement will be tested. And if it becomes false again, the else statement will be executed very simple right now if it is the if this is true the first uh, conditional statement is true this will be executed and these statements will not be executed anymore because this is already true correct and as you can see from the flow chart if the condition is true the other statements are not uh, going to be executed except this but this one here will be executed and afterwards the next statements will be executed well whatever it is no? if there are statements now proceeding um, as i mentioned we also have what we call nested if statement no in the beginning we 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 have discussed that there is a nested if statement no? um, this means that we can have nesting now this is what we call nesting in computer programming and this is what we call uh when you say nesting no uh, uh we we can have plenty now we can have multiple if else statement on a particular if else else statement no? like in this case as you can see we ask the user to input this is the code to do that no so you can see that the float function here okay, will convert any integer that you in input into a float. Pwede namang wala tong float, pero uh, it's better if it is uh, here. No? 
So, ibig sabihin nitong float na to, it will convert the integer that you will input. It will be converted into a float. Okay? Now, the input function here is a typical input function, no? Just like um just like uh, the what we use in our C++, no? We ask the user to enter a number and then we use the 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 function to to scan whether the number is uh, a positive number or a negative number, okay? Uh, so this is how we do it in Python. No? We, we place the input function here, and we put a string here, no? indicating that we want to ask the user that uh, he should put a number. No? He should put a number here. Now, the number that was inputted, okay, will be sent to the variable num okay it will be temporarily placed here but afterwards okay the number that was inputted will be tested no? as you can see here the the variable num will be tested if it is greater than or equal to zero but inside this uh, inside this statement no this conditional statement we also have a nested if else statement inside because we want to test if it is greater than or equal to zero. What if it is equal to zero? Okay. So if you remember, we do this here. But we don't have, this program doesn't have the capability to determine whether the number is equal to zero or not. No? We just say, if it is greater than or equal to zero, we will just print positive or zero. And this is a poor programming, but there is a better way to do that, and that is to create a uh, that is to create a, a a nested statement, no, inside the if statement here. Remember that the if statement here has a partner, the else, and you can see that the indentation of the if and the else statement are the same, and the indentation of the nested if are also the same. The if here has a partner called else. And that, uh, the, the nested statement here will test whether the number is equal to zero. If it is zero, it will print zero. But if, if it is not zero, then it will print just the positive number. All right, as you can see. Now, if all of the conditions here are false, then it will print, ah, that's a negative number. All right? So let's just try to execute it. And as you can see, the program is asking us to input a number here. Okay? If we put a number zero, then definitely no, uh, this test will be validated. That means we put a number zero, the number is greater than and equal to zero, right? But there is another test after that. That is the nested if. That if the number is equal to zero, it's going to print zero. But if it is false, meaning that this condition is not true, it will print, ah, oh, that's a positive number. And as you can see here, if I press the enter, it will say, oh, it's a zero. Because it, it, it satisfies the condition that the number is equal to zero. So again, I try to execute it. I'm going to put 10. So 10 is not equal to is greater than zero, right? But this will be tested first. No, If the number is equal to zero, it will print zero. But it's not zero, it's 10. Therefore, it will print positive number. And if I press enter, you will see, oh, that's a positive number. Now let's put a negative number, okay? When we try to check or test a negative number, the condition above, will always be false because it's a negative number. The number is less than zero, and it's not satisfying the condition here. So therefore, the condition here will be false, and the else body will be executed, which is print a negative number. So if I try to press the enter button, you will see, oh, that's a negative number, as you can see from there. All right, that's the... The, that's an example of an if and an if else statement, something like that. 
Okay. All right, so let's move on with the loop statement in Python. The for loop is the first expression that you would like to uh, understand. No? And as you can see from here, the for loop is used to iterate. And when you say iterate, um, uh, you are looping back. No? And if you want to loop back or to loop within some things, no? Uh, we have what we call iterable objects. So when you say iterable objects, uh, it's like counting your fingers. No, you can count from this finger number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. You're iterating on your sets of fingers, diba? When you count them, those are what we call iterable object numbers that can be counted. And as we understood. There are types of data or variables that we can iterate into. Like, for example, we can iterate on list, on the sequence of list. We can also iterate on the sequences of tuple. We can also iterate on sequences of string. Okay. So we can traverse, meaning that's the term to use. So we can traverse on a list, we can traverse on a tuple and a string. The syntax for the loop statement is this one, no? In C++, it's different, no? Um, in C++, we have what, the, what we call the for loop, but we do it in, in such a manner that the first parameter inside the for loop is the initializer. The second one is the comparison operator, and the other one is the incrementor. Okay, that's the, the part of the for loop that we understood in C++. But in Python, it's a different approach. The for loop here is like uh, uh, you are using the keyword for here. So let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, we are using a for loop. Of course, we have the for as the, the for here is the keyword. Now, what is this val here? Val here is what we call the iterator. So this is going to uh, iterate on the sequence. Okay. And we will be using the in. Okay. In is a identifiable, uh, identifiable um, operator no? that it will identify whether there is or there is none. Okay, so that means if we're going to explain for val in sequence, this is going to, this iterable variable here is going to iterate on this particular sequence and it will be ended with a colon symbol. So that's the completeness of the for statement in, or the for loop statement in Python. And after that, you will see that the body of the four is automatically increment, uh, indented no? because that is the way the, the functions are, are doing. No? If you're creating some loop statement, if statement, by the way, no, you will see, I forgot to explain a while ago, that the if statement, the else if statement, and the else statement, you can see that the body here, no? it always ends with a colon. And you can see that if you ended this with a colon, it should be automatically indented on the next line. Same as the example here. This is the if statement ended with a colon, and it automatically indents the next statement here. For the for the the nested if, you can see here that this is the if statement ended with Ended with the ended with the colon, but we use an a nested if here. Ended with a colon, and you can see that after you press enter, it will be automatically indented. The else statement will be the same as the if statement here. Okay, and then after using the else statement, we ended it with the with the colon, and then it automatically uh indents here but 
we don't want any indention here because we want the else statement here to be partner with the original if statement. So we put the else statement over here, the same as the if statement here. But when we ended the else statement, it automatically indented here. So if this is the same as the for loop, no? The for loop, when you want to use it, it will automatically indent the statement after that. Now, even if you try it now, subukan nyo ngayon, you create a for loop and put a colon here, it will be automatically indented for the next line. All right? So for the, for the explanation of the flow chart, no? Um, in, in a flow, in a for loop statement, okay, uh, the for each item in the sequence will be traversed on the sequence. No? Meaning, each item in the sequence will be traversed. Now, the question is this. Is the last item rich? So, for example, you have a string that has five characters. So, the, the, the five characters will be traversed no, from, the, from character one until the last character. Now, if the last item is rich, then the, the loop will be exited. As you can see here, exit loop. But if the last item is not rich yet, so the answer is no. Then the body of four will be executed. All right, whatever it is, whatever the condition is or the statement is inside that for loop, it will be executed and then it would it continues to loop. That's the looping statement there. Okay, we're going to give some examples of that later. Don't worry. All right, this is the example. Now we have here a list. Okay, uh, it's a list. It's because you can see the list. It's enclosed with the square brackets, right? So you can identify a list if the list is enclosed in an open and closed square brackets, right? So inside the list. We have numbers. We have whole numbers. 6, 5, 3, 8, 4, 2, 5, 4, and 11. All right? Now, we declared another variable here, no? Because our goal here is to add all these numbers and we put it in the sum. Why did we put zero here? That means we are initializing the value of the sum because this is going to be the the container for adding all of the list items all of the items in the list okay so we need to initialize it to zero but when we add something it starts from the fresh start you know? it starts from zero all right all right so let's iterate over the list so we use an iterable variable so you don't need to uh, you don't need to declare the iterable variable by the way that's different no you declare the sequence or the list but it's okay not to declare the iterable variable okay so the iterable variable can be any character any word it depends on your uh, description. It's an arbitrary, no? So this is arbitrary, okay? But basically, this should be an integer, no? Dapat integer to, because it's going to iterate over the list. And the list contains integers, right? So you can see here, the numbers here, it's loading. This, this is a variable. And it contains a numbers or it contains numbers which are a list, no? You can see it's declared here. It's it it, it is a list. Okay. Now uh, the iterable variable will try to traverse on our list. No, it will iterate over our list. The first iteration is six, the second iteration is five, the set the third is three, fourth, and so on until the last, which is eleven. But while we are doing the iteration, the next statement is this, no? We want that the sum, okay, which is equal to this sum, initially our sum is equal to zero, right? 
So the sum of zero will be added to our iteration. So every time that we iterate, we put the value of the of the of the we put the value of the first value from the list inside it. No? Parang yung six nilalagay natin sa val on the first iteration. On the second iteration, we put naman the second on the list, which is five. So if you imagine, if you imagine the iteration, the first iteration here no, will tell us that the sum is equal to zero, but the val is equal to six. So the first uh, iteration will tell us that the first uh, the first, uh, what do you call that? The first sum is equal to uh, to six, right? So if we put a, a print here, print sum. Okay, sorry, the spelling is wrong. You will understand that at the first iteration, wow, what happened? Okay. And in then, Ah, okay. Okay, okay, wait now. Sum, okay. All right, all right. Okay, so like we can put it like this, no? <clears throat> uh, if you try to print it, uh, similar to this one, no? you can see that the sum is equal to 48 because it looped Actually, it loop, uh, it loop from the first one. So if you try to add it, six plus zero is six. Second iteration is six plus five is equal to eleven. Eleven plus three is equal to fourteen. Fourteen plus eight is equal to twenty-two. Twenty-two plus four is twenty-six. Twenty-six plus two is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight plus five is 33, 33 plus 4 is 37, and 37 plus 11 is 48. So that's the way it looked. No? It looked from the first element on the list until the last part because that's the way we we did it. No? So ito na pala yan, meron na pala tayong print dito. So we don't need to actually do that. Okay? So that's the way we, we use the for loop. Uh, illustration. Okay. Now here's another example of an illustration of the for loop. Now, if you want to iterate over a range, now range here is introduced as a command. Okay. And this command is what we call a range. No. So, pag sinabi natin range, it's like a typical. Uh, you can see from here, no, from the help tip. A range is it will return an object that produces a sequence of integers from the start to stop. So this means that this is the start and this is the stop. Okay. So whatever it is, the content of this stop, and since it's a number and it's equal to four, therefore the range is from zero to four. So it will print the X as you can see from here. And you will see that it's printing something like that, no? All right? And as you can see from here, it's printing from zero, which is the start, up to the last number of the range, which is equal to four. So, bakit hindi niya pinrint yung four? Because it's going to just print the number of elements. So, ilan lang ba yung elements from zero to four? Before lang, diba? So it will print the 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right? And if you change that, for example, you change it to 10, so if you print niya, 0 to 9 lang. And there are 10 elements there. Because the number of elements, it contains the, the range. No? The, the range is from 0 to 10. But if you want, you can change the range. For, you can start it to 1. No? You can change it to 1. Kaya yung counting natin is going to be starting from 1 to 9. Alright? And there are 10 elements here because the number here, which will be the stopper, will contain the number of elements that you can see from here. 
right? Another example is this one, no? This is a typical example that uh, you can see. Uh, you can see that we are using the keyword in here, no? This is a keyword. And by the way, what is a, an in here? So if you want to know about it, you can type help. As you can see here, I'm typing the help and I'm executing it. And I will type in as the keyword and press enter. And you can see that the in here, okay, the operator in and not in is a test for membership. Kasi ang tawag dito ay membership operator. Okay? X in S. So this will test, it will evaluate if there is an X in S, no? It will evaluate to true if X is a member of S. Parang ganun, no? So in this example, is X in the range equal to 5? If it is, then it will print X. Okay? So same as this example here, all right? So, so if you want to know something about anything, you can type help and then put the put the the word the keyword that you don't understand, and then there are explanation to to identify whatever it is. No? You can see from there. So in this example, uh, we have a range. We don't have a start, but we have a range. Okay, and the range is. Basically, kapag wala ka nilagay na start, it will always start in zero. So, so ito, parehas lang nito. Ito, parehas lang nito dito sa ating nakarang example. But we do have a range here. We have a start and we have the, the stop. But here, we don't have a start. We only, well, we only have a variable here called five. Okay? So, okay lang yan, no? Kasi dito, declare mo yung uh, stop mo. Okay? But here, you don't declare it, but it's okay. No? If you put something like a 10 here and you execute, it will start with 0 up to 9. Okay? So, basically, ganun yung ano na yan. Okay? Um, you can also iterate over a list. Okay? Over a list or um, like in this example, we have a list of strings. This is the first list. This is the second list, uh, second uh, second item on the list, the third one, and this one is an integer, and it's part of the list, no? So we have how many list here, items? We have four, welcome, OOP, students, 25, okay? And then we can traverse to this list, as you can see, okay? It will list all of the iteration. The first to be printed is this one, no? Ito muna, nasa taas. Kaya nakikita nyo, ito yung output niya. List iteration. And then, the second to be printed is this one, the first one in the list, because we tell the program to traverse this iterable variable into this sequence. Okay? The sequence is a list. So we, we would want to traverse into this, no? So the first to be printed is welcome. The second is OOP, the third is student, and the last is 25. Very simple lang, no? Uh, we can also do iterations on tuple. As you can see here, this is a tuple. Okay? And since it's a tuple, we can iterate on a tuple, same as the list. So you can see here. Okay, it's the same with... Uh, um, uh, it's the same with an, a string. No, we can also we can also iterate on a string. You can see we have a string here, object oriented, and for x in my string, that means we are iterating on each element or each character of this string here. Okay, so you can see this is the output. Object oriented. That's the output of that. No, we, we would want to iterate over it. And finally, we have what we call the iteration over a dictionary. So we have a dictionary here. Okay. 
And this is how we declare dictionary. You know? This one way. One way to declare a dictionary, you create a variable, you provide the function dictionary with an empty set, you know, with empty elements, and then you can put something inside it like my dictionary, this is the key, this is the pair, and this is the value. Another key here is ABC, and this is the value. So what will be the contents of your dictionary? Okay. So the contents of the dictionary is similar to this one. No? Uh, and here we are using uh, control S or percent S and percent D. Okay. And uh, this is just a container for the following. No? First of all, the first item that will be printed here is the X. Okay. So when you try to iterate over a dictionary, the first element that would be Printed is the key. As you can see here, this is the first to be printed. That's the key, and this is the value. Okay? That's the value. So you can see here that the second to be printed is the, uh, the value of the dictionary. Okay? So you can see here, if this is the key, then the value will be printed. So here... The, the key will be printed, but here the value will be printed. And this is how do we do it. Okay. Any questions so far? Any question so far? We have some questions so far. Ah, sorry ha, absent kayo. Yung mga, mga nag-chat ng 901 and beyond, absent na kayo, sorry. Okay. None so far. I am not tolerating late people ha. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience on your part. But I would like to teach you professionalism. No? I, will, I will consider you as absent. It's okay to attend the class. No? Don't worry, but... But if you if you are going to do that you know, from time to time that you're attending my class, you will be considered as late or absent. And I will make sure that you'll have difficulty in my course. You no. Know? Uh, last time I asked people to 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 write to the guidance office to to be excused. At yun din ang ipapagawa ko sa inyo. Otherwise, you will be dropped from my course. Okay. Because that is how strict I am when it comes to the attendance. No, I don't want late people to interrupt my classes. All right. Are there any questions on our topic that we are discussing right now? My questions po ba tayo? If you have some questions, please type one. Or if you don't have any questions, please type zero. And thank you. Thank you sa mga... Sa mga... Tabu na na yung mga late natin. Later, mag-check ako ng attendance. So let's have a break right now. Just five minutes. I'm pausing the recording.